West Virginia has been disrespected again. The Big 12 title odds have been released by FanDuel. Several teams in the Big 12 play some weird spots. We're going to talk about that right after this word from our sponsor. This episode of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football is brought to you by Dutch Miller Automotive, where friends and family pricing means you get the best deal right up front on any new or pre loved vehicle in stock every time. With brands like Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Kia, Hyundai, Ford, GMC Buick and Subaru, the Dutch Miller Automotive family is always growing and ready to put you in the car or truck you've been searching for. Check out our inventory across West Virginia at DutchMillerAuto.com or come on today to the home of friends and family pricing only at a Dutch Miller Automotive store near you. This is for camera. What is up, guys? Welcome back in. My name is Mountaineer Paul. This is another edition of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football, and I'm pissed. What can I say? Welcome in, guys. Hope you're enjoying your day. If you're in my deck of the woods of the country, the weather has been extremely nice today. Hope you got out there and got you some vitamin D. Uh, I'll tell you who else got some vitamin D today. Uh, and that is the West Virginia Mountaineers. Uh, kind of screwed again by these odds. Now, I understand on one hand why things are like they are. But let's get into this a little bit, guys. I'm going to read an article that kind of goes over each Big 12 team, team. But this is in order from from worst to first. So let's get started with that. And I think it, I believe we start with the Houston Cougars, if I'm not mistaken. But here we go. Big 12 football, early conference championships odds released for the 2024 season. The Big 12 conference race expects to be nothing less than thrilling with little separation between those predicted to finish in the top half of the standings. The additions of the four quarter schools, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah, add to the intrigue. Where will the newcomers stack up against the traditional members and those that joined a year ago? Both Arizona and Utah expect to be in the mix, with key returning talents on offense. Baylor, Kansas State, Oklahoma State, and TCU are the only Big 12 teams with at least a share of the conference title in the past 20 years as Oklahoma and Texas depart from the SEC. First, or last, we should say, Houston Cougars at plus 13,000, which is just a huge number. Four and eight, two and seven in the Big 12. Houston is an unlikely contender as it begins under a new era under Coach Willie Fritz. The Cougars struggled in their first season as power conference members in the Big 12 and should expect similar results in 2024. Still, given the location in a recruiting hotbed and a proven winner in Fritz, who led to to back-to-back double-digit win seasons, Houston is not expected to be down long. BYU, plus 13,000, and just once again, a huge number. They were 5-7 and seven and 3-6. and six. BYU won just two Big 12 games in their first year as conference members in 2023. The Cougars lost each of their last five contests and fell one game short of bowl eligibility. BYU had had back-to-back losing seasons in the mid-2000s. Ninth-year head coach Kalani Sataki returns less than half the starters from last season with quarterback Keaton Slovis off to the NFL draft. Offensive improvements are needed after finishing tied for last in the conference in scoring. Arizona State, plus 10,000. Kenny Dillingham battled an injury-plague roster in his first season in charge of Arizona State. Now he must manage a new conference and a grueling schedule in 2024, while also trying to piece together a roster. On a positive note, most of the Sun Devils' offensive starters are expected to return. Touted quarterback Jaden Rashida played in just three games last season and should win the starting job over returning veteran Trevor Borget. Cincinnati Bearcats, plus 6,500. It's hard to believe Cincinnati is just three years removed from a college football playoff appearance. The Bearcats struggled under first-year head coach Scott Satterfield while adjusting to the Big 12 in 2023, winning just three games overall 
in one in conference play. There's not much optimism about a possible turnaround in 2024, and Cincinnati does not string together wins. It will likely be before November. Baylor Bears plus 5,500. They were four and eight and three and six in the Big Twelve. David Rand is in a critical win now mode as he enters his fifth season as head coach at Baylor. Back to back losing records resulted in an increased pressure heading into twenty twenty four, and the Bears opted to retain Aranda for at least another year. Baylor is ten and sixteen since winning the Big Twelve title in twenty twenty one. That includes a six and twelve record against conference opponents. Something has to change in Waco, and it needs to happen fast. West Virginia Mountaineers, plus 1,900. That means everybody after this is projected to finish ahead of us, guys. Neil Brown got himself off a warm seat after he led West Virginia to its highest single-season win total, nine, since 2016. The Mountaineers returned most of their production from 2023 and could be in a position as a potential dark horse Big 12 title contender in 2024. Starting quarterback Garrett Green, as well as top rusher C.J. Donaldson Jr. and Jaheim Wider in the backfield again. The two combined, the trio combined for 2,412 yards, 28 touchdowns on the ground last season. So, now remember, guys, we're about halfway through this. <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of teams in the Big 12 now, uh, and every team picked from here on out is picked ahead of West Virginia. And I'll give you a little hint. This puts West Virginia in 10th place. I'm just going to be honest. I, I can't see this. There's no way we finish in 10th place in the league, guys. If we do, we got to move on, right? We know that. So while I think it's going to be a competitive league, and I think, you know, you could possibly win six or seven games and, and be in that, you know, Nine, eight to nine range. Uh, I, I don't think I don't think that's going to be us. I, I truly don't. We have one of the hardest schedules in the league. I, I think that's why that we're uh, in this position. Uh, and it seems like we're just undervalued altogether, anyways. But I mean, if you look at our schedule, it's absolutely brutal. Uh, it does not get in the first half of the schedule is just. It's probably the hardest, you know, in the Big Twelve. So uh, it's going to be rough. We know that. But at the same time, we feel like this team is poised to take the next step, and that means like big road wins. Uh, we're expecting that to happen. Don't forget to like the video, guys, as always. Uh, it helps feed the monster I call the algorithm. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you can. As always, it's the off season. I get that. But certainly trying to get to 2,000 and have been for a little while now. Drop a comment below, as always, guys. We love to hear your feedback on this. How do you feel about these odds? Are you pissed off? Do you feel like West Virginia is a good place? What about Oklahoma State? We're about to talk about them in a second. How many teams have been disrespected in the Big 12 on this list? Uh, and are, are the incoming Pac-12 members getting too much love, or is it legit? Let me know how you feel. TCU Horn Frogs, plus 1,600. TCU failed to even reach a bowl game last season after finishing as the national runner-up in 2022. However, the Horned Frogs have too much talent on the roster to be expected to be in contention for the Big 12 in 2024. Quarterback Josh Hoover earned valuable reps as a starter in the last six games this past season and expects to take over the reins again in the Kendall Browse offense. TCU needs a bounce-back season. Oklahoma State Cowboys at plus 1,600. To me, that's wild. <laughs> this is a team that won 10 games last year, guys. And returns basically everybody on offense, including the best running back in America. Last year, they were nine and three and six and three in the Big Twelve. Oklahoma State returns twenty-one players that started at least six games last year, when has finished as the Big Twelve runner-up. So why do the Pokes have the eighth best odds to win to win the conference in twenty twenty-four? That is a good question. One reason could be their record in games decided by eight points or less. Mike Gundy went five and one in such games last season, and there are a handful of potential loss of, toss up battles on the schedule in 2024. Perhaps Vegas believes things will even out. Not a bad point. Iowa State Cyclones at plus 1,200. 
the Fighting Rocco Becks. Seven and five, five and four. Iowa State exceeded expectations last year by reaching a bowl game despite finishing to finish tenth in the Big Twelve standings. The Cyclones wound up in a tie for fourth place, but Iowa State returns most of its starters on offense and defense after fielding one of the youngest roster rosters a year ago. That expect experience makes the Cyclones a potentially dangerous opponent led by ninth year coach Matt Campbell. UCF at eleven plus eleven hundred. Some of these are just knocking me for a loop, to be honest, guys. UCF had an up and down year year one <coughs> as members of the Big Twelve in twenty twenty three. The Knights lost their last five conference games before winning three out of the final four, which included a forty five three beat down beat down a Big Twelve runner up Oklahoma State. UCF lost three games by less than a field goal. The margins between a great and average season can be similar in 2024. And Malzahn enters his fourth year in Orlando, averaging eight wins in the previous three seasons. Texas Tech Red Raiders at plus 850. <clears throat> The schedule sets up for a strong start to the season by Joey McGuire and Texas Tech. The Red Raiders could likely be 5-0 and at the end of September and a legitimate top 25 team before the road gets much more challenging. Texas Tech was in a similar situation as a potential Big 12 title contender at this time last year. Maybe projections were just a bit early. The Red Raiders last finished in the top three of the conference standings in 2005 when the Big 12 had divisions. Arizona State Wildcats at plus 750. Seven and five, five and four. Arizona is one of the two Big 12 newcomers from the Pac 12 near the top of the odds makers list to win the conference in 2024. The Wildcats still expect to be a strong contender in the Big 12 next season despite losing head coach Jed Fish to Washington. The return of star quarterback receiver duo Noah Fafita and McMillan should lead more positive results in Tucson. New head coach Brent Brennan takes over a program that reached double-digit wins for just the fourth time. Kansas Jayhawks at plus 650. What Lance Leipold has already accomplished at Kansas in just three seasons is almost unbelievable. They were 8-5 and five and 5-4 five and four in the Big 12. The Jayhawks went winless the year before he arrived, but quickly flipped that narrative surrounding the program with nine wins and a bowl victory in 2023. Now, can Kansas build off that momentum in 2024? The health of quarterback Jalen Daniels is a key with an 8-4 and four record as a start of the past two seasons. Unfortunately, the Jayhawks will not have any true home games this season as renovations begin on the stadium at Lawrence. Kansas State Wildcats are number two. They were 10-2 and 7-2 in the Big 12, and Chris Kleiman is a proven winner, and that is likely a key reason why Kansas State has the second-best odds to win the Big 12 in 2024. The Wildcats claimed the conference crown two seasons ago and were in contention late in November last year. Touted quarterback Avery Johnson takes the reins of a Kansas State offense this season with high expectations, and the Utah Utes at plus 340. Well, Kyle Whittingham and Utah ruined the Big 12 party in year one as members of the conference. The Utes expect to be one of the, if one of, if not the top contenders for 24, especially for the return of star quarterback Cam Rising, who missed all of last season while recovering from a knee injury. Utah got a favorable draw as far as its inaugural Big 12 schedule, with games against each of the other three four quarter schools that left the Pac 12. Wow. So there's a lot of junk in here that it's hard for me as a, as a, a probably a more biased West Virginia fan to justify. I look at the Texas Tech team. I look at UCF. I'm, I'm thinking we beat those guys, you know, and it's hard for me to accept that these teams could possibly be better than West Virginia because I don't see it. I just think we're undervalued at the end of the day. And I'd like to see where the Mountaineers end up come the end of next season. I wish I'd do it now, but I don't. 
Uh, at the end of the day, I think West Virginia is going to be a top four team when it's all said and done. The number one rushing offense in the country, in my opinion, one of the two best backs in the conference, maybe one of the two of the three best backs in the conference. An offensive line, the school is going to be really, really good. Uh, they may even be able to stay on par with what they were last year, if not better. You never know, especially if Wyatt Milam and guys like that can ascend. And they've signed a lot of talent out of the portal, especially two Power 5 guys from Northwestern that went 8-5 and five last year. You know, they started a lot of games on that team on a really salty defense. So let me know how you feel about West Virginia in the comments. Let me know how you feel about a team like Oklahoma State getting picked so low. There was a couple shockers on this list. Be curious to know what you guys think. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Hope you enjoyed it. This has been another edition of Mountaineer Paul Talks Football. This episode is over. I am out.